day, lords and ladies, and welcome back to Medieval Knights, the channel that brings you the best in less plays, tips, and trick videos and streams every Wednesday and Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am TJ West, and if you enjoy this video, please be sure to hit those like buttons and subscribe to follow Medieval Knights. So without further delay, let us begin. Thank you for joining me for another episode of What the Flax? And today we're going to be going over the hunting lodge and the woodshed. First off, we're going to go through them in detail as far as their looks, their aesthetics, and their actual what they do. What you can actually physically do yourself in them. And then we will learn after that how to actually set them up with villagers and what setting them up with villagers actually means for you, the player. So first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and grab a screenshot of this right here. We're just going to do that and do that and back and we are good to go okay so the hunting lodge it's pretty simple it's got waddle walls this is hunting lodge one it's got a uh, thatch roof and it's pretty simple it's pretty you know stable building it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere however this is tier one so it does deteriorate pretty fast so when you walk inside there's going to be a chest every production building has a chest in it it's gonna have a barrel for salting meat. If you have salt in your resource storage, you can set your villagers, or you can do it yourself by pressing E here. See that? Okay. And then you have a hunting lodge workbench, which actually, I don't have these unlocked yet, but that's okay. I'm just here to show you what actually happens here. So it's basically, you're just making and crafting bows, arrows, and bolts. So that's pretty much the basic hunting lodge workbench. And then the chest is for overflow. So I mentioned on the previous episode of What the Flex uh, involving the storages that when your resource storage or your food storage becomes overly full, it'll overflow into the production buildings. This is the chest that you're going to want to look into when that overflow occurs. Now your villagers will not take meat, leather, or fur from this chest and move it to the proper storages. You are going to have to do that on your own time. Uh, whenever this happens so if your food storage overflows and you didn't notice it now you got a bunch of raw meat in here you have to physically take that to food storage for it to be used in the tavern and cooked up for your villagers that is the same for every production site for example if my woodshed here filled up I would have to physically come here pull the things out and take them to my resource storage as my villager will not do it for me so back to the hunting lodge with Hunting Lodge 2, there is the ability to tan uh, hides and whatnot, but there aren't hides in the game, so it's really just a decorative rack that goes right about there. And with the better walls, it just makes it to where you're repairing the Hunting Lodge less often, and it's just basically, the Hunting Lodge 2 is a solid upgrade once you get to that point, and I do not think that you will regret building it once it's built. So, that's the hunting lodge. It is the main source of meat, fur, and leather for your village when you finally get established and get villagers working it. Now, it will not cook the meat. It will only salt the meat if you have it set up to do so. It will just provide you with raw meat, leather, fur. It will also provide you with gathered berries, mushrooms, and uh, uh, basically feathers. So your hunters and gatherers will find feathers on the ground from doing that. So, on to the woodshed. We have spoken about the aesthetics of the hunting lodge and the fact that the second hunting lodge is kind of worth the upgrade. It does deteriorate slower. It provides a little bit more aesthetics and viewing uh, capabilities as far as like the tanning rack goes. It just makes it a nicer, a more pleasant view for the eyes, if you will. So that's the hunting lodge. Now this is Woodshed Tier 1. I'm using all Tier 1 buildings right now for this video. Just because Tier 1 is the earliest that people will have unlocked and therefore will be the earliest that they can interact with. So what does your Woodshed do? Your Woodshed is primarily your wood gathering resource, your wood gathering building. So you assign a worker here, they're going to go out and they're going to chop down logs, gather sticks, bring them back, and then once they do have logs in their resource storage and you set it up, they will then take those logs and craft them into firewood or planks. So here's the carpenter's table. You just push E here and you can make planks or firewood. 
it's pretty simple. That doesn't change when you move up to Woodshed 2. You can only basically craft the same two things here. And then the chest is for overflow, as I mentioned at the hunting lodge. All the production chests are for overflow, so as soon as your resource storage is full up, they will start depositing things into their work chest, their work site chest, if you will. And at that point in time, you will have to physically go up and clear out the chests and add them in. Or take them to your resource storage. Now, bear in mind, if resource storage fills up and your production site fills up, your worker will not continue to work. They will stand at their production site and they will basically just stand around doing nothing until you figure out why they're standing around doing nothing. So if you find that your workers are kind of being lazy, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're just kind of standing around their work site, then go ahead and check your storages, make sure they're not full, check the production site chest, make sure those aren't full, and just basically do a welfare check for all of them and make sure everything's going well and there's no hiccups in your system. Now as you can see, Blanca here is my hunter but she's just kind of standing there. That's okay because typically hunters don't, I mean they do have the chance to go out and do hunting. I know some of the NPCs around that you cannot recruit, you can actually watch do some hunting. I just don't believe for your villagers NPCs that interaction has been added in yet. The game developers have been very good about updating very often so they've been doing good about that. However, if, you're, if you do find that your hunter is just kind of standing in here, keep an eye on your food storage and make sure that they are actually producing raw meat because a lot of times they'll just stand there, but you will still have an influx of raw meat, leather, and fur. So just bear that in mind. Sometimes they just stand around, but they will still be working or they could still be working. And if you're worried about it, just keep checking your, meat, your raw meat supplies in your food storage. And if they seem to be going up, then your hunter's doing the job. So, now that that is said, we have gone over the hunting lodge, we have gone over the woodshed on the outside. Let's dive into the management portion of these, these buildings. So for now, we're going to go into here, and this is going to show you your villagers. This first page here. If we press the tab button on our keyboard and we come over to management tab over here, we have our lumberjack who has three extraction skill. We have our hunter who has three hunting skill and then we have our field worker who has three farming skill. If you don't know what these symbols mean, you can go into your skills here and they will kind of tell you right here what the name of that skill is. So that's extraction, that's hunting, farming, so on and so forth. So why do I bring that up? Well, I mentioned this because for your hunting lodge here, if you go into your buildings tab of your management tab, woodshed one here. Okay, we're going to click F down here to open details. There we go. So he has a skill of three in extraction, which is the skill needed for this profession, if you will. Professional lumberjack. Now if we go here, he is working 50% to gather logs and 50% to gather firewood. Now what that means is, for every hour, he's going to gather 1.8 logs. Now, because logs isn't a resource that breaks down into more logs, for example, you can't take one log, break it down into four logs. You basically just take the one log and you have one log. Well, because of that, from here, the good status and the total of 1.8 per hour to the production screen here, 1.8 per hour, there will be no change because it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio. For every log you get, you have one log. So for every 1.8 logs per hour, your guy's gonna get 1.8 logs. Now that is not the same for firewood or planks due to the simple fact that for every one log, you make four firewood. So what this over here is telling you is it's going to do three quarters or 75% per hour of what one log would give you. So it's based on the one log aspect. One log turns into four firewood. So if you are have your worker working at 50% power towards that and the total is 0.75 per hour, for every 
four firewood is a hundred percent to one log. So if it's at 0.75, that's at 75% of one log, it's going to bring in three firewood. I know, that was really confusing. So I'm going to go over it one more time, really quick, just to make sure that it sinks in. So based on this screen, the assignment screen with your goods, the total at the right-hand side is a percentage of the total. So if four firewood is the equivalent of one log, and one log is the equivalent of one log, for every hour you're going to gain 1.8 firewood, or 1.8 logs. But for the firewood aspect, you're going to gain 3 out of 4 firewood because he's working at 0.75 per hour. So think of this number over here for the firewood and the planks as a percentage. And then you could just basically, if 100% is 4 firewood per every log, and he's getting 0.5, then you can assume you're going to end up over here at 2 per hour instead of 3 per hour. So I hope that was a little bit more... Uh, explanatory for you. I hope that explained it a little bit better. We're going to go ahead and jump into the hunting lodge now and explain that one. Now if you want to set somebody here and you don't have anybody signed yet, you can click this area here. You click F and then it'll bring up a list of your villagers. Look through their skills, find the best one with the, the best extraction skill, and then I would recommend hiring them for that job. Okay. So we're going to get out of the woodshed and we're going to pull up the hunting lodge because this one has a little bit more that goes along with it. So hunting lodge one, you can put two workers there. And I believe that is because there are two professions you can set. So at hunting lodge one, they're like, okay, we're going to let you do one per profession. So right now you can do hunting and survival or hunting and gatherer. I have my villager set at hunter with a three hunting skill. And the reason for that is because of the hunting skill. Now, if you look up here, it says gather is survival. Okay, so if you remember that, we just go over here and look. Oh, wrong button. Hit escape too many times. So all of my villagers here have a two in survival. So I could put any one of these people as a gatherer, and they will do exactly the same as every other person that I have right now. If I had somebody who was just outstanding at survival, they had a three or a four, I could put them at survival and they will gather faster. So if we go here, I already have a worker assigned. We go up to here. Everything is based on worker skill power. And it's all based on what you personally can craft per hour. So right now you can't really craft meat, leather, or fur per hour because that is a resource that you actually have to go out and hunt for. And feathers are also something you hunt for being birds. Uh, berries and mushrooms are the only two things on this screen that will actually be needed gathering for. So if you did assign a gatherer here, those are really the only two things that a gatherer can get, is berries and mushrooms. So just be mindful of that. So here at this screen, 4.5 per hour, it's pretty much the same over here. It actually is exactly the same over here. You're just going to produce 4.5 meat per hour. Uh, the leather is at 0.75 because it's at 0.75 here. If I increase the power here, then that would go up. In order to increase this one, I have to decrease this one because this up here is at 100%. So the more percentage you use down here, the more percentage you use up here. So if this had multiple places, like the tavern has a lot of different things that you can craft, you could scroll down and be clicking, you know, go 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5 well now I'm lost, so now what do I have to do? Well, you have to go up here and say, okay, I am using 100% of my skill power, I guess I can't do that anymore. Or reduce this one to increase that one, and that just, if you notice up there when I did that, it took my power down, and then it brought it back up. So that's just a way to gauge where you're at as far as assigned worker power. So, there's that, there's that. Now when you are placing your workers, I will state, be mindful of the job you are going to give them. If they are hunter, they need high hunting skill. If they are gatherer, they need survival skill. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter as far as if you have a villager that is one across the board he has ones in all skills but you need him to fill that void there 
That's perfectly fine too. Go ahead and throw them in the spot. They'll learn it over time if they have to. So there is a way you can train them. It just takes a lot of time and it's a lot more difficult than just trying to find somebody with a three in that skill already and getting them to join you. So, that has been our explanation on what the flax over the hunting lodge and the woodshed. And I really hope you enjoyed this today. I really hope it was helpful. Now remember, it's all based on your storages. So if you feel like your workers aren't doing anything, aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing, aren't doing anything, I should say, then just go ahead, take the time, check your storages, check your woodsheds, or check your production sites. That includes the barn, that includes the tavern, the sewing, the smithy, all of it. All your production sites. If you notice your workers aren't doing anything, please check those out. Thank you all again for joining me today. I'm going to stay warm here in our nice little house, light the campfire, get it cozy. If you would like to see more, please hit those like and subscribe buttons and ring that bell to be notified of future uploads. Live streams are currently every Wednesday and Friday beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the possibility of new dates to be released soon. Check me out on Twitch under Medieval Nights. I am TJ West and let's keep it medieval, people.